Hello, design professionals. My name is Natasha Selly. I'm the publisher of KBB Magazine, Kitchen and Bath Business, which is, as you may know, the official publication of the NKBA and KBIS show. Um, last night, I thought I would look up on the internet how foodie is defined. And it was a person who has an ardent and refined interest in food and who eats food not only because they are hungry, but as a hobby. I fall into the second half of that definition. <laughs> I want to introduce you today to eight brands who cater to these types of people. I'm going to let them introduce themselves because they will pronounce their names much better than I will. Hi, everybody. I am Bianca Olson. I am the trade rep for Sub-Zero, Wolf, and Co. Hi everyone, my name is Scott Davies. I am the Director of Marketing at Decor Appliances. You have one? Hi everyone, I'm Paula Smith. Is this on? I don't think it's on. I don't think it's on. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Paula Smith. I'm the Marketing Director for Fisher & Pico for our Designer and Builder channel. Hi, I'm Sherry Mercadante. I'm the National Trainer for SMEG. Hi, I'm Julie Burns. I'm the Executive Director of Monogram. Hello, my name is Emily Beerley. I am the Builder Developer Manager for Beko Appliances. You have a great voice. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Danielle Caron, Senior Brand Manager for Signature Kitchen Suite. I never need a mic, but we're going to give it a shot. And my name is uh, Jared Costa. I am the Director of National Sales and Product Training for Mila USA. Thank you, everybody. And before we start the discussion, I just want to thank Cosentino for letting us use this space, this beautiful newly designed space. And I hope after the session, you can all walk around and check things out. They have a full sales team here with, who can answer any questions you may have. My first question, I'm going to start asking the entire panel, but we'll ask um, Bianca first, is what is Sub-Zero, Wolf & Co.'s latest initiative on offering or offering for luxury and smart kitchens. Uh, lucky one to go first here. Thank you so much for the question. Um, I would say in regard to smart kitchens, uh, many of our appliances are what we call connected capable. I'm sure we all have a smartphone and we're used to apps controlling our lives sometimes, running our lives, making things a little bit easier, uh, more streamlined, so why not your appliances as well? So many of our appliances, the vast majority I would say, um, have that connectivity capability. So you would need a Wi-Fi connection just to um, connect to your appliances, have a single app for our three brands, and it can do things like your everyday kind of intuitive things, such as preheating your oven, maybe you're on your way home from work and you wanna get that started, getting notifications, perhaps somebody left the refrigerator door open, uh, you want to start your dishwasher, get notifications. So besides just doing those everyday kind of tasks, it can also um, organize things for you. We're all busy, we're juggling a lot at once, work, family, friends. So it's a great way to just keep things organized, to manage your kitchen. It can keep track of things like um, your user guides and service calls, a lot of service calls can even be done remotely through the app, so you don't have to have that um, in-house service if you don't need or want that. Um, keep track of different uh, updates, various things like that. So it's just really a way to stay connected um, through that smart technology. It can tie into uh, whole home services like Alexa, Control 4, Google Assistant. I mean, these are kind of the buzzwords. This is really how our lives are run these days, so why not um, have your appliances tie into it as well? What about decor? What about decor? So, um, right, I won't pick on a single product or initiative. I think holistically, when decor develops our appliances, <clears throat> the, way, the way our appliances from a cooking standpoint are segmented, we have two, two key collections. We have our contemporary collection, which is very sleek, minimalistic, and then our newest release, which started last year, and for those that are able to make um, KBIS uh, in January next year, you'll see this come to fruition as well. We've been investing heavily 
and broadening and deepening our transitional collection, which is um, very robust, more stainless steel. Um, and as we build these appliances, we sort of look at it with three, three lenses, one being design, one being performance, uh, and then the third one being technology. And I think that's where the smart kitchen comes through, right? Um, to the earlier point, every appliance we develop is connected in some capacity. I think that the key is articulating to the design community, to our consumers, like what does that actually mean? Some great use cases over here. Um, everything we do should be enabling our customer to make their life a little bit easier. I think we, we see wonderful marketing about these fantastical dinner parties, and which is great, but I don't know about you, but we don't do that every day. Like there's a reality lens that gets thrown over there. We've got kids or we've got, you know, everyone's got jobs, there's lots going on. So I think the smart kitchen becomes really important to make customers' lives easier, to make it intuitive, and ultimately let the appliances do the thinking for you. And Paula, what is the latest initiative or offering for luxury and smart kitchen from Fisher Pickel? Uh, thank you. So, I have the, okay, I'm just going to put that one down. <laughs> don't want to work for me. So, with regards to um, our latest initiatives, um, we're constantly introducing new products to the market, um, but overarching, when we are developing products, we're really thinking about designing for a changing world, and there's a lot, number of thematics that go into that. Um, one being human connection is more important than ever, sustainability, and of course technology. So as we're developing products, we're also thinking about the actual consumer's needs day to day. Much like Scott was saying, you know, we all have um, different lifestyles, different obligations to manage. So we think about how can we create a product and a solution that serves the homeowners and the designers that specify our products the best. Um, and so when it comes to being connected, certainly, and I think probably all of us on the panel, we probably all work for companies that understand technology is something we all use and need to use. So we think about, again, how to best apply that. So it comes to managing the product itself. It comes to understanding what energy usage the product is using at any given time. Again, that goes to thinking about, you know, again, designing for a changing world and sustainability. Um, we think about being connected to the whole home. Um, I have a four-year-old at home who thinks Alexa is her friend, and <laughs> she goes to bed every night and she says, Alexa, turn off the lights, Alexa, play sleepy time music, and in the morning she says to Alexa, good morning. So, you know, it is a changing world for sure, and so, you know, again, we think about how we connect all those systems to make people's lives easier. Sherry, what about Smeg and Luxury, the latest offering or initiative? So, we've taken our most recent initiative, um, you know, like everyone's saying, we're, we really want to bring the best products to the consumer. We actually want to bring the product to the consumer by having stock. So what we've started to do is we've, <laughs> oh, he's good, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so we've taken back the manufacturing process. Um, we've always made the ranges, ovens, dishwashers in-house. We have these huge factories. We just purchased a refrigeration factory. Um, the induction, which is finally becoming a big hit in the US, it's been around for decades, but the US was very slow to, to catch on. We've now taken the entire manufacturing process for all of our induction in-house. Uh, I've been to the factory, I've seen what they're doing with the components and everything. Um, and we then are able to control the features, we're able to control the quality, and we're able to control the supply chain from the bottom up. So it's never been a problem for dishwashers, never been a problem for ranges, built-in ovens, but we just keep expanding our manufacturing capabilities so that we can always have stock. That is something that is needed, <laughs> I can tell you. Who knew that would be an initiative? <laughs> it's all we write about. Right. Um, Julie, what about for monogram? Yeah, so for monogram, I think, you know, the way we think about it, much like what everyone said about, you know, nearly all of our appliances are Wi-Fi enabled. And the way in which we think about that is about how can we take some of those everyday tasks and make them much easier? We know that they're doing their favorite nonprofit fundraiser, but during the week they're active in the kitchen and they're working on it. So how can we make things a lot easier so that they can do those culinary kind of masterpieces day in and day out? So for instance, in our professional range, we've got a true temp burner. And so it's the first market first on a gas burner that you can actually control temperature down to the degree. So very similarly in terms of the precision of induction, but you actually get that in gas. Um, and so just thinking about what does that mean? 
Um, from a Wi-Fi enabled perspective, I mean, this is about not just some of those maintenance kind of cues and making things easier, but it also is around um, being able to push over the air updates. And so for instance, we, you know, Thanksgiving last year, we did air fry. And so that way you had something there to remove the clutter, you know, on your countertop. Um, we did steakhouse mode, so some way that you could do a reverse sear. So all of those things that lean into that whole foodie environment, but also wanting to have and replicate those restaurant quality dishes at home and impress your you know, friends and frankly, even your family. I know I get criticisms from my two sons all the time on if they want a fancy dinner. <laughs> what I realized, just so you guys know, is it's all about plating. Mm. It exactly the same thing. All you have to do is just plate it in a fancy way and they're like totally on board. Good call. Um, good call. Good tip. <laughs> Emily, what about for Becco? Um, so for Becco, it's really about sustainability. Um, our parent company, Archlick, is recognized as the most sustainable appliance brand in the world. Um, and so for Becco being a newer brand to the U.S., it's really about being innovative, um, coming out with product that is smart for the consumer um, and not just from a Wi-Fi capability, but really looking at the impact on the environment. So we, last year, if you're familiar with our dishwashers, uh, we updated all of our dishwasher technology um, to include our corner and tents. So it's about really being able to have the best cleanability in the industry, being very affordable um, and thinking about what consumers need going forward um, for those who are coming to Cavis uh, this year or next year, I should say. Um, we will be introducing our new Harvest Fresh technology, which we think of, you know, what consumers need, what we need, um, you know, we preserve food with our refrigeration. So it really comes down to the te technology and being innovative in that regard. So there's a lot of new things that Becco is coming out with. Um, so yeah, but sustainability is definitely a huge part of it. Great. Danielle, signature kitchen suite. Well, Natasha, <laughs> nothing says luxury quite like signature kitchen suite's new 48 inch French door refrigerator freezer. This monster is absolutely spectacular in every way. It comes with dual compressors, a beautiful metal interior, which minimizes um, temperature fluctuation down to within one degree Fahrenheit to pres preserve food freshness. It also features dual ice. It can cover just about any kind of a beverage need that you could possibly have. It features our uh, spherical craft ice, which everyone seems to know and love. Um, in addition to the fact that it also has our unique, innovative convertible drawer. Um, this drawer gives tons of flexibility, five preset temperatures ranging from 41 degrees down to seven degrees uh, for the ultimate flexibility. And of course, from a technology standpoint, our Think You Care, uh, technology which would uh, make sure that a customer's product is functioning at its optimal level of performance if in fact if by some chance there were any issues which of course with signature kitchen suite there never is <laughs> um, uh, you would be alerted and um, I think that's a nice to have as all of my co-workers mentioned how all of us are so incredibly busy so that you know alert about changing your filter or you know little tips here and there really go a long way so thank you Jared what about Mila and the latest uh, initiative for luxury and smart um, so for us you know sustainability is at the core of what we do so that's a huge focus in fact uh, 2021 uh, we became zero net carbon emissions across all production facilities, which we're really proud of. And beyond that, it also kind of circles back to creating purposeful innovation that enhances the end user's life. It's not so much during the engineering phase to ask, can we do it? It's, can we do it in a way that will ultimately exceed the expectations of the consumer? If we can create things that enhance their life, whether it's through convenience, through connectability, through inspiring uh, people who really have passion points in the kitchen like foodies or even people who have a really high degree of enjoyment for wine or coffee. These are things that we really look into and in how we can kind of advance the functionality and the features of the products that we're bringing to market. Well, coffee definitely enhances my life. Um, I'm going to pose my next question and start with Scott on this one. What is Decor's vision for the future? of the smart kitchen? 
So <clears throat> I was in Chicago a few weeks ago for Design Chicago. I actually did a similar type um, session. And it was two half days. We had lots of presentations from NKBA and others. And there was a really, really consistent theme, smart, smart, smart technology, technology. So it's definitely something that we're hearing a lot of. I think as it pertains to Daycore and the future moving forward, we've said a lot of it. Um, the, the, the idea of, of integrating um, our customers' lives as seamlessly as, as we can is, is sort of at the mantra of what we do. So what does that actually mean? <clears throat> Excuse me. So I, I look at it at two levels. Level one is the, the cost of getting a smart a device has come down substantially. One of the big barriers to entry used to be they're very expensive. That's come down a lot. So accessibility has gone through the roof. As such, a lot of our customers and, and a lot of anyone's customers, uh, there's so much connectable uh, devices available, whether that's Alexa or Nest or Sonos or, or Ring. You know, there's over, there's hundreds of different partners. So the two levels we look at it, and first of all, we've got to make that easy. So the platform we use is SmartThings. Um, there's several hundred partners that use that platform. So one app lets you do everything. And I think when you have multiple um, connected devices throughout the kitchen, that, that becomes really important, right? So let's make it easy. Then when you go down a level in terms of our product, <clears throat> I think when it comes to smart kitchens, like I mentioned earlier, it's um, letting the appliances do the thinking for you. So our customers, like most of us on the panel here, are investing an enormous amount in a, in a luxury appliance. So they expect beautiful design, they expect good performance, and they expect lots of technology. And I think along with that comes the ability to let the appliance do the thinking for you. Um, and ensuring that the customer is connected, whether they're in the backyard entertaining their friends or whether they're in their second home somewhere. They always need to be connected to their kitchen. They can, you know, they can preheat their oven from the store. If something happens to their beautiful wine fridge, it's a push notification, tells them that there's something wrong with the wine fridge and they can fix it. Um, you know, we have cameras in our refrigerators, for example. The first question you ask is, why do I need a camera in my refrigerator? Um, it takes a photo every time you shut the door. If you're at the store, you can see what's in it. Therefore, do you need to spend money on milk or, or whatever that could look like? So A, if you spend the money and you don't need it, you've now thrown it away. So there's a sustainability story. So again, it's, it's, it's letting the appliances do the kitchen, uh, excuse me, do the thinking for you. So as we fast forward several years, you're going to start to see um, all of that thinking go into the product, let you live your life, and then um, everything just becomes a lot simpler. Paula, what about Fisher Paykel and their vision for the future of the smart kitchen? So um, at Fisher and Paykel, when we think about the smart kitchen, it's not just about, you know, we've been talking about Wi-Fi connectivity, it's about the technology that goes into the products as well. And something that you touched on a bit, you know, in terms of um, food and waste, we think about the food care cycle and how food should be treated to elongate the life. So well over 10 years ago, we came up with the cool drawer, which is a product that has variable temperature zones and you can alternate between five different temperature zones to preserve food the best and longest, whether it's chill mode or pantry mode or wine mode. We've taken that technology, we've put it into all of our integrated refrigeration products therefore elongating the life of the product. And then similarly, when it comes to our cooking products, we have technology to, again, best treat the food because there's, again, a few different elements that touches on, you know, healthy living is a new luxury, sustainability, right? So our technology goes beyond just thinking about Wi-Fi and connectedness, but how can the products that we put into people's home enhance their lives in a healthy and sustainable way? Sherry, what about Smeg and the vision for the future of the smart kitchen? So uh, one of my pandemic projects in my home, and I don't live in the city, so I have a house, was I installed landscape lighting, and it's all smart lighting. And I'm pretty sure that my husband is going to cite this as a reason for divorce because he has lost the control of all the lights anywhere in the yard. <laughs> so Smeg, recognizing that, uh, we are dumbing it down, baby. We are not doing connectivity in the US. We are in 100 countries with 100 electrical codes and 100 uh, cultures and cooking requirements and cleanup requirements and 100 different types of kitchen design. You know, not a lot of Americans are buying 60 centimeter fridges. Um, you know, Americans, we like our big 48 inch fridges. <laughs> So there is connectivity on our appliances in Europe, where we are just a hugely uh, widely recognized company. We've only been in the US for about 10 years. 
So we're focusing on features, meeting the demands of the customers. And we do have excellent technology in the units, but we are not focused at this moment in the US on smart connectivity. OK. There's a lot of people that don't want it to. Simple. <laughs> so, turn it on, turn it off. <laughs> yes. Julie, what about for Monogram? So I think for Monogram, I mean, it's probably a combination of, of some of the different things that folks have said. I mean, I think one is that, you know, obviously, a lot of our appliances are Wi-Fi enabled. And again, I talked a little bit earlier about some of the OTAs that were the over-the-air updates to make things really simple. I think part of it is simplicity is really important. Um, when you realize that there's a lot that goes into what that smart kitchen looks like and ensuring that it is, is intuitive and it is easy. And when you download the Smart HQ app, it is easy to understand on what exactly we want. Um, I think in all you know frankness, I think we, we've got two, you know, we've, done an induction change um, on our cooktops. And we also have a new bottom freezer platform coming out in 23, both of which are now really Wi-Fi enabled, which were not. And frankly, they were gaps in our portfolio. Again, just to be able to make to pull all that together and make it really simple. Um, and to really just make it much easier for everybody on what that looks like. You don't need all of the superfluous kind of bells and whistles when in reality, what you want is your food to maintain freshness and for it to be connected with everything else and to make it really easy and intuitive. Thank you. Emily, what about with Beko? So with Beko, what we're focusing on is, in addition to sustainability, is um, what the healthy kitchen looks like. What do not only our uh, global customers are looking at, but now that we're focused on the U.S., what does the average U.S. customer need? What, what does it mean to them? So really understanding the customer base, putting the technology into the products that make it function. So again, having all the fancy bells and whistles when it comes to Wi-Fi connectivity. We're not going to be, um, you know, in putting television and all that type of technology into the appliances. It really comes down to how does it impact the customer. So as a new brand in the U.S., it's a lot of conversations that we're having internally to really come out and bring out new product that makes sense for the marketplace, um, to be really um, strategic in what we are introducing to the marketplace, making sure that the pro product not only looks great, but functions well and really serves a purpose at the end of the day. So. Great, Daniel? Yeah, so because SKS is part of LG Electronics technology giant, we really pride ourselves on the, on the brains behind the appliances. So of course, all of our appliances are Wi-Fi connected and they all will soon have our new Think You Can technology. And what's really cool about this is chances are if a customer has an SKS kitchen, they also have an LG TV, uh, dehumidifier, air purifier, vacuum, uh, the list goes on and on. So one app can control all of these devices without having to toggle between multiple ones. And Jared, Mila's vision for the future of the smart kitchen. So, uh... For Mila, there's a couple of things that really, I think, come first and foremost, which is we have our mechanical engineers and the people who are writing all the technology behind our apps working with lifestyle experts specific to each particular product. So for instance, your coffee maker may have a function within the app that isn't relevant to a convection oven and vice versa. So it's also about creating advanced functionality that's very simple and intuitive, but ultimately, again, enhances the end user's life uh, through something like a barista assistant that customizes a coffee specific to your particular taste and that wouldn't be replicable through anyone else trying to do something because only you have your own taste. But beyond that, it's also about taking that perspective and trying to connect multiple appliances so that what you start on your induction cooktop, you can finish in your combi steam oven or vice versa. So right now we're in heavy development to start having appliances talk to one another. And one of the first examples of that will be a uh, warming drawer that will warm your coffee cups up to a specific temperature so that they're optimal for use in your coffee machine. I love the idea. <laughs> Bianca, I don't want to make you go first every time. So Sub-Zero, Wolf and Cove, vision for the future. <laughs> Well, um, I think I would echo many things that my fellow panelists said. Clearly, there is a common trend or theme here of the connectivity of technology, innovation, how to make people's lives easier, essentially, is kind of maybe a way to sum it up. Um, so one thing Sub-Zero Group is doing beyond just the connectivity 
we're expanding our um, gourmet mode. Um, it's a functionality that's within our oven. It's something that takes the guesswork out of cooking. Many of our clients love to cook. They know how to cook. They've been cooking for years. Some maybe never have even turned an oven on, but they want to learn. So our gourmet mode is a system. It's built into many of our electric ovens now, and we're expanding upon that in the future with new offerings. Just a way to take the guesswork out of cooking. It follows dozens and dozens of preset uh, recipes to cook anything from meats to vegetables to baked goods, uh, casseroles, et cetera. And it really walks you through the process. What dish are you cooking? Uh, maybe it's a chicken, what cut of meat, uh, what temperature do you want it in the end? Not with chicken, but with beef perhaps. Um, what rack to put it on, where to put the probe, what to set it to, it really walks you through all the steps, makes cooking enjoyable and easy for people. We don't want these things to just look pretty in their homes, even though that's unavoidable. There are those clients that just want the look and maybe they'll never touch the appliances. But um, it's a great way to make them feel more at home, more comfortable, more familiar with these products. So this technology we want to introduce into as many appliances as possible. That's clearly where we are, where we're going. So just really expanding upon those offerings. Paula. Good health is important, and it starts in the kitchen. What are Fisher Paycal's initiatives when it comes to good health? So I think I touched on this a bit um, with um, the last question. Um, you know, again, we think about healthy living and what that means for people, and a lot of people buying fresh produce and also thinking about the origins of their food. So certainly when it comes to the products that store the, the produce and the proteins and the ones that cook them, we want to preserve that food as long as possible. So again, um, we have variable temperature zones in our products that elongate the life of various produce. And so you can set the temperature zones precisely for that product to, link, to elongate the life. And then similarly, when you're cooking, we have the right modes to treat that food perfectly. Um, so again, touching on what I mentioned earlier, we're thinking about um, what it means to be healthy. It, and it really comes down to the food that people are buying and how they're storing it and how they're cooking it. What about for SMEG and good health initiatives? So one of the things that SMEG did was uh, we partnered up with AJ Madison in bringing good health everywhere in our communities by donating fridges that were packed with food for uh, like, a, like a food pantry that could be outside for people who need to access it. So sharing that with the community. Um, and also I'm sure that there's a lot of people you know, as designers, we've been hearing about steam cooking and how healthy that is for all these years. But for kitchen designers, when you're laying out the kitchen, you've oftentimes had to decide, can I fit a steam oven in here? If I do, then do I not have a microwave? And what about convection and, and, and making decisions about, at some point, you end up with a kitchen that has 20 appliances and three cabinets. So in Italy, we released at Euro Cucina this year, the Galileo system, which is one oven, one cavity. It can microwave, it can convection cook, bake, roast, toast, and steam. So you no longer have to have a microwave, speed oven, steam oven, combi oven. It's one wall oven, and it'll do everything that you need it to do. Great, what about monogram, Julie? Yeah, so for Monogram, I hope you guys, maybe you may or may not know, we partnered with Gwyneth Paltrow earlier this year. And, you know, part of that is around, you know, helping and partnering with, with her to really talk about what our journey is in terms of health and wellness. And so, you know, as being kind of the wellness kind of, you know, and lifestyle guru that she is, you know, being able to bring some of those different recipes and wellness tips and all of those things to life um, is part of what we've been doing. And so, you know, we've been releasing content um, every other Wednesday on what those tips look like, but more importantly with that, on what it means in terms of your ingredients that you select, how do you prepare them, and how does your body react to those? And those are the things that are really important in terms of how you're gonna prepare your food, what does that look like for a healthy lifestyle, and one that can really be packed full of flavor and, and not be bad. I mean, there's, I think when, Healthy cooking first came out, it was like, oh my gosh, I have to eat like spinach <laughs> in pureed form and granola, and, and therefore I'm gonna be healthy. And so there is a way to be able to approach that in a really 
you know, great way. And so she's been helping us with that journey. So I will do a little bit of plug. If you guys don't follow us on social, uh, please do. We're releasing content um, with her tips and recipes every other Wednesday. Great. Emily, what about Becca? So for Becca, for any of you who do follow us on social and so forth, we this year we had created our Healthy Kitchen Council. So it's comprised of Tony Sabatino and 10 others, so 11 in total, of designers, influencers, dietitians, and so forth that are helping us to really learn as a collective in this country what it means to have a healthy kitchen. So um, they are users of Beko appliances and we're learning a lot from them. They're also creating uh, recipes and doing a lot of different things to give us feedback so we can continue to grow here in the North American market in the right way possible. The other initiative that we're gonna be launching soon is our partnership with Dole. Um, Dole is a global um, food company that most of you are familiar with. Um, and so we are going to be launching that initiative and it's really going to help us grow our North American market, but also our global outreach when it comes to what healthy food or healthy uh, living means, what a healthy kitchen means and so forth. So a lot more to come on that too. Great, thanks. What are the health initiatives behind Signature Kitchen Suite? So SKS, the SKS mantra is true to food. And we are always laser focused on preparing foods in the healthiest way possible. We do that in two ways. One, through sous vide cooking, and the other, of course, through the steam oven. Uh, sous vide cooking, I cannot think of a healthier way to prepare a meal. Um, it perfectly cooks a protein or a meat uh, tip to tip. Um, it's not rare in the center and more well done on the outside. It's perfectly evenly cooked from one end to the other. It keeps all of the nutrients in the vacuum sealed bag, so you don't need to add marinades or special sauces, reducing the calorie count. And again, for us busy folks out there, it really makes it very easy for you to prepare uh, or pre-prepare a meal, a well-balanced meal for your family with very little effort. The hardest part is putting the, the food in the vacuum sealed bag. If you can do that, you can cook with sous vide. Um, and the other, you know, steam oven, of course, the steam penetrating uh, the food, keeping the nutrients and vitamins uh, in the food, uh, you can't go wrong with that as well. I can attest to that steak from Signature Kitchen Suite at Cavis a couple of years ago. Jared, what about Mila? Uh, so from Mila's perspective, there's a, a few things that go into health. Um, the first is that beyond our culinary appliances, we have cleaning appliances. And with that, of course, comes laundry and dishwashers. Uh, for us during COVID-19, we took a long, hard look at how we were delivering clean into the home because that certainly can either contribute considerably to a healthier life or it can also be the antithesis. So uh, for us, we're really happy to say that even within our quick and tense wash cycles, we achieve a level three virus removal and we have an equitable removal of bacteria. So it's really accessible to have a healthier lifestyle for your family, just in the sense of truly maintaining your health. But to go beyond that, um, you know, I was reading a survey recently from 2021 uh, that Hal's did on kitchen trends. And uh, no surprise at all, nearly 50% of Americans wished they lived a healthier lifestyle and diet being one of the biggest contributors to that. But what's even more interesting is that the average household is willing to spend about $20,000 to achieve that which is really the difference between having a mass market product in the home or having a premium product in the home. Because what's good for the goose is good for the gander. If someone has that additional $20,000, it doesn't necessarily always have to go just to the appliances, but to the overall project. And I think it's important to recognize things like what we're discussing here, making healthy living more accessible, making it simpler, making it easy, because we all know what we need to do in order to eat healthier. The real question becomes how much of a pain point is it to achieve that? And that's where things that we're discussing, I think really start to contribute to those trends. Great points. Bianca, Sub-Zero, Wolf and Cove and Healthy, healthy Initiatives. 
Oh, well, I think a lot of great things were discussed here um, that I was getting excited about. Uh, definitely the, the steam oven and the vacuum seal drawer are fantastic cooking tools for healthier dishes. So I wanted to add to that too, um, refrigeration. So at Sub-Zero, we call ourselves the preservation specialists. I think everyone, certainly after the pandemic, kind of reevaluated our health, our wellness, cooking more at home. Some of us, I know myself included, get a little intimidated to buy too many fresh ingredients, fresh produce. We just worry it's gonna go bad too quickly. Um, so we end up throwing a lot of food away. I'm sure we've all heard stats at some point of all the food that is wasted, that's thrown away, the, the billions of dollars of food, of packaging, all of these things. So um, as the preservation specialist, we really like to emphasize um, our, our refrigeration line, certainly. Um, our dual compressors, where you have the refrigeration and the freezer cavity controlled separately. And it's really important just to have that longevity of food last even longer. And just this year, we added an additional feature within our refrigeration system to have the drawers controlled separately from the shelves. So if you do have that, you go to the farmer's market and you load up on that beautiful produce, and you put it in that drawer, you can turn the humidity up just a little bit more versus the shelves, just to add that little bit more of longevity. We've crunched the numbers and we figure about $2,000 in savings just on food that is not thrown away each year that can really help offset the, the cost. So if um, consumers are a little worried about the high price tag in the beginning, really in the end, they're gonna save so much on food, they're gonna eat healthier, they're gonna be more encouraged to buy those fresh organic ingredients. Scott, what about decor? So for decor, I'll look at this two ways. I think there's a, a functional way. Um, we've been talking a lot about steam. So all of decor's ranges <clears throat> and built-in ovens, steam is standard. Um, we, we prefer not to um, hard plumb in our steam, so it's all re reservoirs. We don't want to deal with hard water, and there's issues that come, of course, when, when water lines break. So that's, that's table stakes for us. Um, we also have, uh, you know, a convection, uh, combi convection oven that air fryer steams, um, or, or, you know, speed oven, all, all that, I'll say, stock standard. I think, from a, again, from a functional standpoint, steam is critical, but then there's, of course, an ease of use. We all want to be healthy, uh, but we have to make that easy because sometimes it can be quite complex. So, again, throughout our um, built-in range, as well as our induction cooktops, actually, we have step-by-step -step recipes built in. So if we want to cook something healthy, uh, we, we, we guide the customer through how to do that, what to buy, what rack to put it in, um, and if you can't be bothered reading, there's videos in there that can actually play you step by steps as well. So we wanna, there's a function element and then there's an ease of use. And I think if we flip it to refrigeration, it could be as simple as, you know, we're all working within like 30 inch or 48 inch or even 60 inch size refrigeration spaces. There's a limitation there, but what we can do is maximize the interior space. I think Paula mentioned earlier, um, you know, produce is, is, is large and it can be expensive, so we want to make sure we have ample space within that product and it lasts as long as, as possible. Thank you. My next question is one that is, I think, my favorite. And I'll start with you for Smeg. What appliance is Smeg best known for and what is the story behind it? What do you guys know Smeg for? Dishwashers, ranges, Dolce, Dolce and Gabbana, the refrigerator, which has just, I mean, Smeg's been around for like, you know, 70 years or something. And, you know, a couple decades ago, we brought out the, we just, you know, we wanted an interesting appliance that's a freestanding refrigerator for the kitchen. And we designed this retro style, pretty small fridge, not, okay for most American primary fridges in the kitchen, right? And this thing has grown and now, you know, we have toasters and blenders and all kinds of things that, that coordinate with it. And one of them's a raffle prize, the hand mixer, it's really good. Um, <laughs> so it is, um, it has definitely come into a life of its own. So since we took that, we've expanded the sizes, we've gotten smaller and bigger all equally embraced. Um, we have then partnered with Dolce & Gabbana. Uh, there are still some hand-painted refrigerators still out there on the market. Uh, they're about 50 grand. <laughs> there are the 
the reproductions like we have in our showroom. Then we partnered with Coca-Cola from the 1971 commercial. You know, I like to teach the world to sing, right? Now we have their retro design refrigerator. Um, if you get the Christmas catalog from Neiman Marcus, keep an eye out for the new Veuve Clicquot uh, fab fridge. It does, does not come stocked, I, I'm sorry to say, but uh, yeah, it's a good looking fridge. <laughs> um, and it really just, I think it is, look, we are the happy appliance company and I think that one of the reasons people love these fridges is because they can put them, in, you know, in a garage, in a in a movie theater room, in a in a playroom or something, and it, they're just, they make you happy, right? They're happy colors, happy patterns, and just a heads up that if you really love it and you really want it as your primary kitchen fridge, we do have a full scale U.S. size coming in 2023 in all our favorite colors. It's large, and one of the colors will have an antique brass handle on it if you're matching with other kitchen accessories so smeg the fab fridge <laughs> where can we first see that maybe at k it's, it's probably going to be at k -Bis, is my guess i'm not 100 percent sure but if it's going to be available that soon it will be at k -Bis. <laughs> how about monogram yes for monogram i would say holistically it's our cooking product i mean i think we've been you know very grateful for all the many awards that we've received for our um, latest professional range but I think, you know, even before that, when we started to restage the brand, we came out with a hearth oven. And I think what is great about the hearth oven is that it's, you know, it pushes the envelope in terms of technology, but also the ease of use. And it's not just a pizza oven. It's, you know, while we all love a great Neapolitan pizza in two minutes, um, it will roast uh, vegetables and fish and everything else. But the best part about it is the technology that's built in where, you know, we've got a catalytic converter. And I'll be honest with you guys, I know this also in automobiles. <laughs> I have no idea what it does in automobiles. Um, and I also know it's stolen because of the right, right. So, But outside of those two things, what I'll say for at least for our hearth oven is that it allows you to not have any incremental ventilation needed when you install it. And then it also does not allow any of the smoke to billow out. So you get all of the great performance of a brick oven outside that you get to have have it indoor. Um, so it's, I love it personally. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> and what about Becco's best known appliance and its story? Well, <laughs> today I will say it is our dishwasher for sure. With the launch of our corner intense technology um, within the past year, um, and the most important question this year is, do you have inventory? Um, yes, we have a lot of inventory. So um, we, and we launched the Corner Intense. It's really an industry first. Um, we launched it first in Europe, um, did some testing there, and it's been very successful since we launched it here this past year. Um, and with our, you know, you have several different um, um, uh, uh, visuals in terms of the handle options and so forth, excuse me there. Um, but, but we are also going to be coming out with new refrigeration. So I think next year, if we have the same conversation, we'll be saying refrigeration too. Okay, Signature Kitchen Suites, best known appliance. So SKS is very proud of having the industry's first and only pro range with built-in sous vide. Um, I could talk all day long about uh, sous vide technology. But um, we're really proud. It comes in both 48 inch, 36 inch, again, built in water well right on the stove top. You don't need an, any, any external device, sous vide bond, anything like that. It's all built in in one unit. Um, we refer to it as the uh, Swiss Army knife of ranges, and we absolutely love it. And Mila's best known appliance. Uh, this one's a little tough. Our portfolio stretches quite a bit. Um, for people here in the U.S., uh, I think a lot of people in the luxury field know Mila for dishwashers, for laundry. Um, I have a funny story. My sister was seeing a guy from England, and uh, you know, he asked me where I worked, and he said, "Oh, our Hoover is a Mila." And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "My head hurts. I don't know what you're saying." Um, but it, <laughs> They use the word Hoover for vacuum cleaners there, which uh, sure. But um, for us, you know, we have a lot of uh, a lot of industry firsts since 1899. We were the uh, first company to put steam cooking into the residential kitchen. Uh, we were the first brand to put a horizontal axis in a washing machine. The first one to put a brain inside of an appliance with the first microprocessor. Um, but 
for me, I'll just speak selfishly and say, because um, I agree with you considerably, <laughs> coffee is not just a passion, it's an addiction and a necessity. So I would say, for me, I, I love our coffee machines and what they bring. Our latest innovations are really great, and I highly encourage, if you have the opportunity to visit us um, on the ninth floor, we'd be happy to show you exactly what we're doing right now currently with coffee. And Bianca, what about Sub-Zero, Wolf & Cove? What would be the best known appliance among the three? Well, our name, Sub-Zero, Wolf & Cove, I know it's a mouthful, the three different brands, but I think people know us best as Sub-Zero. It's kind of, not only is it shorthand and easy to say, it, it's really kind of what people think of. Sub-Zero, our refrigeration brand. So I would certainly say refrigeration as a whole is really what we're known for. Um, probably the classic uh, series refrigeration within the offerings. Um, it was formerly called Built-In. Uh, we really pioneered a lot uh, to do with built-in refrigeration back in the 50s. Uh, Sub-Zero has been around over 75 years. It's still a family-owned company to this day. U.S.-made product. And it really started with um, our founder, Westy Bakke, was trying to find a more effective way to store his son's insulin for uh, juvenile diabetes. So it really started many, many years ago and has come a long way since, but I think still will always be known as Sub-Zero, the refrigeration. And it can be secondarily um, with Wolf, the red knobs, very, although it's not an appliance, it's a very signature piece for us. And Decor's best known product. So I think your best known product is our 48 inch dual fuel steam range. And I'll, I'll explain why. We released this product a number of years ago. Um, and it's the output of an enormous amount of um, uh, research, whether that's within the design community with consumers. And as we were developing this product, you know, we built up a laundry list that we have to have everything. And typical marketing sales world, we want everything but what the engineering and PD team can deliver is there's a gap between the two, right? Like reality versus, you know, what we actually want. And, and we gave the team a really, really aggressive goal to jam pack this product with everything. And, and the output is what we see today is they were able to achieve that within the price bracket that we needed it to be. Um, it's loaded with uh, features, as I mentioned earlier, such as steam and convection. And, and I think one of the beauties of this product is, um, you know, we have a, effectively a tablet built into this, this thing, full color. And the engineers that, divide, that uh, you know, design the Galaxy tablets is the same engineers that design our appliances. So we get some um, similarities there between the tech world and between our appliance world. So I think that's, that's our best known product. Thanks, Scott. Um, so Fisher and Paykel, we were actually we were established in 1934 in New Zealand. And our origins go back to refrigeration and laundry. Um, however, I know that there's two panelists and probably everyone in this audience <laughs> can say what we're most known for. <laughs> Dishwasher drawers. Dishwasher Dish drawers. <laughs> so, and it's a really interesting story. So we've had the dish drawer in our line for over 20 years now. Um, we've gone through many iterations. We just introduced our first um, unit with stainless steel interior. Um, but how it came about was the uh, product development team and engineers were sitting around thinking about, you know, what can we do with dishwashing that's a little bit different and one of them looked over at the file cabinet. <laughs> and now we have dishwashing in drawers. And um, it is something that, um, you know, everybody who has one says, you know, why doesn't everyone have one of these? And, you know, there's a lot of technology that goes into it that makes it what it is. And it's tried to be replicated, but not yet. So over 20 years, the dish drawer. But we're happy to say that we have a full portfolio of refrigeration, cooking, laundry, and our DCS outdoor brand to complete the full portfolio. Thank you. My next question is, I think, going to be quite valuable for not only the panelists, but also for the audience here. We don't have a lot of time, but I want to give you all the opportunity. Is there any popular misconception about your brand? And if so, here's a chance to clear it up. Oh, what a loaded question. <laughs> That wasn't on the list. <laughs> I love that. For Monogram, I think, you know, for those of you who've known us for quite some time, you know, we've been around for 35 years as GE Monogram. Um, and, you know, in all candidness, I think, you know, we were, you know, a good, better GE um, when we were that brand. And, you know, four years ago, took a completely different journey um, where we have a house of brands as it relates to GE appliances and said, We've got a really great brand here in Monogram, and so let's go ahead and start doing a complete restage of the brand. 
So I would say, you know, while I think some folks may have known us that we've been around for quite some time, we are a completely new brand. And so I think if you can suspend your, your preconceived notions on who we were before <laughs> and take a look after the restage that we started three to four years ago, you know, it's squarely in luxury. We've been really thoughtful about what we do, um, not just in terms of the materials that we're selecting, but how those things perform. I think you heard a little bit from me throughout on just some of those like technology things that are really intuitive and, and ultimately help our end user. Um, but you know, we're we're a brand new we're a brand new brand, <laughs> and 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 just it's it's been really great I think to see the evolution. Okay, thank you. And just as a reminder, there may be no misconception. I just want to give an opportunity if there is oh, you anything for Becca. <laughs> Um, for Becco, I think because we are a new brand in the U.S., the you know the notion is we're a new brand, right? Um, the reality is Becco has been a brand in uh, throughout the world for 67 years, and we are the number one brand in Europe um, um, and several countries throughout the throughout the globe. So it's definitely a brand here in the U.S., but we have a lot of um, energy behind us to support us. Um, we manufacture, we have 19 manufacturing facilities as well. So there's a lot of good things to come to us in the U.S., but yeah. Great. Anything on Signature Kitchen Suite? So yes, because SKS is a six-year-old brand, uh, I think that we are still um, very new in the space. I think that we don't have as much brand recognition. Signature Kitchen Suite is a little bit clunky to say, so we say SKS. And I think the biggest stumbling block for us has been because SKS is part of LG, could SKS really be considered key players in the luxury appliance space? And I think we've already proven that to be true, so. Great, Mila? Uh, I think for us, it probably comes down to just uh, historically speaking, we established ourselves as an ultra luxury brand. And in the past few years, we've really had a refocus on creating something that's a bit of a dual strategy. So while yes, you can still get those ultra premium luxury appliances, we're also starting to create new lineups that will speak more to the mass premium. The, definitely not mass market. It's not ever going to be you know, a discount brand by any means, but I think you'd be surprised by the versatile price points we offer today while also maintaining consistency with production. Uh, so our entry line products, as an example, will be through 60% of the production before it knows it's going to be either entry level or top of the line. So maintaining the integrity of the product while offering new price points has been one of the things I think that would be probably misconception to overcome. Understood. Sub-Zero Wolf and Cove. Probably no surprise here. Uh, what I hear most about, I guess, is questions on price point. And well, yes, we are more at a luxury price point level. All of our units are built and strenuously tested to last 20 plus years. So over that span, as I mentioned earlier, the savings on food, um, things like that, it really does pay for itself. And it's for that customer that <coughs> loves that longevity, loves to cook, um, appreciates that craftsmanship, that quality, that US made product. So whereas, <coughs> yes, maybe we're not gonna be in every single home, we don't strive to be in every single home. We are a luxury brand and um, we stand behind that. We stand behind our customer service that goes along with it. It's, we're with you well beyond um, the appliances being installed in the home or with you for the life of the appliances. Any popular misconceptions on decor? None whatsoever. So <laughs> um, I'll give you a little bit of a backstory. So, so de decor, for those unaware, it was, it's a, it was a family-owned brand. It was born and bred in Southern California in the mid-60s and for the longest time um, focused almost entirely on cooking. Um, yes, the brand offered other categories, but we OEM'd it, right? Um, I think one of the many benefits of Decor is our parent company is the largest tech brand on the planet. And along with that comes the ability to scale and scale quickly. So what you've seen from us really in the last sort of five years is heavy, heavy investment in the, in the US market. Um, significant broadening and deepening of not only our cooking portfolio, but um, making big, big impacts in the built and refrigeration uh, standpoint as well. So growing and growing quickly. Paula, what about for Fisher Pickett? So when we opened our showroom next door seven years ago, um, it wasn't 
atypical for a designer to walk the building with their client and hit a few showrooms and then stop by us to see said dish drawer. And when they walked through the doors, what they saw was a beautiful collection of refrigeration and cooking products. And we can provide the whole portfolio. Um, and related to that, we're, we are known, contemporary styling is what we're known for, but we offer the beauty of choice. So we offer contemporary styling, classic styling. We have an amazing pro range lineup. Um, and we also offer both ultimate those ultimate kitchen solutions inside the home and outside. So we can offer anything to suit your client's kitchen indoors and out with our DCS brand, as well as laundry products. So we can really cover the whole gamut. And for Smeg. We're not just retro refrigeration. <laughs> Fully integrated refrigerators, amazing dishwashers, pro ranges, colorful ranges, um, just steam ovens, speed ovens, it's small appliances. We're so much more than just retro. And I think something that I know when I joined the company, I had to replay the video over and over because I thought I was seeing things. So our company actually started, we're part of the Bertazzoni family. Like, Right? Nobody knows this. So you had this Bertazzoni family back 100 years ago, and they start making wood-burning stoves, and then the family splits. And part of the family becomes Bertazzoni, and part of the family becomes SMEG, which is, I can't speak Italian, but basically it's, it's an acronym for Smaltery Metallurgisch Emilian Gustaya. We're in Gustaya in northern Italy. And our factories are literally right around the corner from each other. And the two owners are cousins. So, you know, it's something that some people feel like Smeg is like this newer company, but, you know, they, it's been around for a very long time and it's part of a family that people recognize, you know, with intense marketing and everything. And we have a beautiful range of products. Thank you. I want to thank our panelists for letting us get to know all of you and your brands a little bit better today. And um, I want to thank again Cosentino. And our panelists, I think, will be around here uh, for any Q&As after because I think we're going over just a little bit. But I'm going to turn it over to Tony Sabatino to um, So I want to address. thank all of you. And I, for those of you who don't know me, I am the current AKBA Manhattan sponsorship chair. Um, as I was referenced by Emily, thank you, thank you Emily. <laughs> I am part of the Beckham Healthy Kitchen Council. I have been on the BSH Design Council previously, full disclosure. I am currently cooking in my personal Fisher Paykel kitchen. I have worked with every one of the brands up here and specified all of them for my friends and family. I've designed a Bertazzoni display for uh, an appliance store in, um, in, uh, in Suffolk County. And, and basically what's so important to me about this is I love all of the magic boxes that we call appliances. And I think to have all of you in the room together for everybody to get to know a little bit more about your personal story. And if they didn't know who you were and that you were more than a just drawer, now they do. So I encourage everybody here to get involved with your client's lifestyle, with their foodie passions, understand their value set because every one of these stories will appeal to the value set of somebody who you were working with. And I can't thank all of you enough.